The movie begins with Mike Enslin, a cynical, jaded author who specializes in writing about haunted locations and supernatural events, despite not believing in any of it. He travels to various haunted places, stays there, and writes about them, but all the experiences are mundane or explainable, which reflects in his skeptical attitude toward the paranormal. He has written several books on haunted hotels, graveyards, and other supposedly supernatural spots, and although they sell moderately well, Mike has lost passion for both his writing and life. His disillusionment stems, in part, from personal tragedies, including the loss of his daughter, which weighs heavily on him. While living in Los Angeles and researching his next book, Mike receives a mysterious postcard that piques his interest. The card depicts the Dolphin Hotel in New York City and has a simple message, Don't enter 1408. Intrigued by the warning, Mike looks into room 1408 at the Dolphin Hotel and learns that many people have died in the room under strange and violent circumstances. The warning only fuels his skepticism, making him more determined to visit and expose it as another hoax. Mike contacts the Dolphin Hotel to book room 1408, but he's immediately met with resistance from the hotel staff. They firmly deny his request to stay in the room, citing that it is not available. The manager of the hotel, Gerald Olin, eventually reaches out to Mike personally to discourage him from staying in room 1408. Mike, viewing this as part of the allure to draw tourists and enhance the hotel's reputation as haunted, presses forward, invoking legal rights as a guest to stay in any available room. He threatens legal action, forcing the hotel to reluctantly allow his stay. Olin reveals that over 56 deaths have occurred in the room and that no guest has ever lasted more than an hour. After insisting on staying in room 1408, despite the warnings from Gerald Olin, Mike finally makes his way into the room. The room appears quite ordinary at first glance, with standard furnishings and nothing seemingly out of the ordinary. The wallpaper, bed and lighting all seem dull, contributing to Mike's growing skepticism. As Mike starts to unpack his belongings and prepare for the night, he sets up his voice recorder, intending to document his experience for his next book. He mocks the warnings about the room and comments on the mundane appearance, believing it to be just another overhyped, fraudulent haunted location. Initially, Mike experiences only small, strange occurrences that he easily dismisses as coincidences. For instance, the alarm clock in the room suddenly switches on by itself, playing an eerie song, We've Only Just Begun by the Carpenters. Mike turns it off, still unimpressed. He also notices that the room's temperature fluctuates oddly, becoming unbearably cold at one point and then warm again. Mike brushes this off as poor maintenance. He continues to record his observations, noting the minor disturbances, but remains skeptical. As time passes, the strange occurrences escalate. A painting on the wall seems to change subtly, and Mike starts to hear unsettling noises, such as whispers and strange creaking sounds. He also finds that small, everyday objects in the room begin to move on their own, and the furniture starts to shift position slightly. Mike's calm exterior starts to falter when he attempts to leave the room to take a break from the unsettling atmosphere. However, when he tries to open the door, it won't budge. He realizes he's locked in. The phone also becomes useless, as there's no signal, and when he calls the front desk, he gets only disturbing, nonsensical responses. As the room continues to play tricks on him, Mike begins to experience disturbing visions and hallucinations. He sees phantom figures of people who died in room 1408, including one who jumps from the window, replaying their death over and over. The room also plays on Mike's personal traumas, especially the loss of his daughter, Katie. Mike begins to see flashbacks of his past life with her, including moments from her illness and death. These emotional visions start to break down Mike's skepticism, as the room exploits his grief and guilt, making the horrors deeply personal. The room continues to manipulate reality in increasingly terrifying ways. At one point, Mike tries to escape through the window, but he finds himself looking out at an endless expanse of windows that stretch out as far as the eye can see, with no escape. The hallway and the world outside the window no longer seem to exist. This suggests that room 1408 has taken control of Mike's perception of reality, trapping him inside an inescapable nightmare. Mike also attempts to climb through the ventilation system, but the room distorts his path, disorienting him and making every attempt to escape futile. As the horror deepens, Mike's fear grows, and he realizes he's dealing with something far more sinister than a typical haunted room. The room begins to warp time and space and Mike's sense of control slips away entirely. His once rational mind, which dismissed the paranormal as mere superstition, is now crumbling as he struggles to comprehend the horrors he's witnessing. One of the most heart-wrenching moments comes when the room manipulates Mike by showing him a vision of his deceased daughter, Katie. He sees her alive, and they share a heartbreaking, emotional moment where Katie appears to be real and standing in front of him.
However, this vision quickly turns into a cruel trick, as Katie fades away in his arms, leaving Mike devastated. The room uses Mike's grief over Katie's death to torment him emotionally, deepening his psychological anguish and breaking down his resistance even further. In a moment of desperation, Mike tries to escape by setting the room on fire. He believes that if he burns the room down, he might be able to destroy its evil and break free. He sets a series of items ablaze, and the fire quickly spreads, engulfing the room in flames. As the fire rages, the room begins to collapse around him. And it appears as though Mike's plan might work. The scene becomes chaotic, with the room disintegrating into an inferno. Mike is consumed by the intense heat, smoke, and destruction, believing this is the end. After the fire scene, Mike experiences what seems to be a miraculous escape. He wakes up on a hospital bed and is told by his wife that everything that happened in room 1408 was a dream. He's told that he had suffered a hallucination after a surfing accident and has now recovered. She confirms that room 1408 was just a fabrication of his mind. Mike returns to his normal life, and it seems like everything has returned to normal, he's free from the horrors of the room. However, as he starts to notice small inconsistencies in his surroundings, the horrifying realization dawns on him that he never escaped room 1408. This normal life was just another cruel trick of the room, designed to give him false hope. As Mike's false reality shatters, he finds himself back in room 1408, the nightmare continuing. The alarm clock resets to 60 minutes, and the digital numbers start counting down once again. The room essentially mocks him, showing him that no matter what he tries, he cannot escape. Mike realizes he is trapped in a loop, doomed to relive this torment over and over. The hopelessness of the situation begins to overwhelm him, and he contemplates his fate. The room appears to have full control over time, space, and his reality. In the final moments, Mike, beaten and emotionally broken, decides to record one last message on his voice recorder, describing the horrors of room 1408. However, rather than resigning to the room's control, he makes one last desperate act to break free. He finds a Molotov cocktail using the remaining liquor bottles in the room and threatens to destroy the room again, this time for good. As the clock approaches zero, Mike sets off an explosion, igniting the room in flames once more. The explosion sets the hotel on fire, and Mike is found alive among the debris by firefighters. He survives and leaves the Dolphin Hotel, but the experience in room 1408 has changed him permanently. Mike later listens to his voice recording from the room and hears the voice of Katie, confirming that the events were real and not hallucinations. Make sure to like and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time. See you soon.